Mike is requesting me on Patreon to review Piglet's big movie. Following the success of the Tigger movie, it made sense for Disney to make another film centered on a different resident of the Hundred Acre Wood. Piglet was a logical choice to give a starring vehicle, as there's a lot you can do with that little pig. While the film certainly has its charms, it does feel like the sort of thing that maybe would have been more appropriate as a television special rather than a theatrical feature. There is a storyline of Piglet not being appreciated enough by his friends which upsets him. When Winnie the Pooh and the others find him gone, they go to look for him. That storyline feels like it would be the sort you might see in an episode of The New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, and the filmmakers really try to stretch it out. Their solution is to have most of the movie consist of short flashbacks, which is an odd way to tell the story and only highlights the premise is not enough to sustain an entire feature. It should be noted that the flashbacks are based on stories from A. Milne's Winnie the Pooh books, and as expected from this franchise, they are certainly sweet. Although in the first one, Rabbit comes off as speciesist as he distrusts his kangaroo mother and her son who moved into the wood and immediately wants them gone. Rabbit is usually depicted as a stick in the mud, but there's still a sympathetic element there. This is definitely his most unlikable moment, though. Occasionally, we cut back to the main story of Pooh, Tigger, Eeyore, Rabbit, and Roo searching for Piglet, which really does serve as little more than a connecting thread between the flashbacks. There are some amusing bits in Piglet's big movie that made me laugh, mainly involving Tigger, and Pooh gets to share funny lines, too. These are genuinely endearing characters, and it is nice to spend time with them, even in the flimsiest of plots. The movie includes some songs by Carly Simon, and I think Simon is a very good songwriter, but most of the tunes she provides for Piglet's big movie are nothing that special. But the kind you might hear in cassettes of simple children's songs, and the Sherman Brothers created a higher standard for this franchise. Her best song in the film is With a Few Good Friends, which does have a nice bounce and energy to it, lacking the rest of the soundtrack. I also did like her cover of the classic Winnie the Pooh theme. Interestingly enough, they decided to include the promotional music video for With a Few Good Friends in the end credits. Nothing against that, just a surprising way to finish the movie. One of the high points of Piglet's big movie certainly comes from the animation, which almost justifies the decision to give this a theatrical release rather than putting out direct-to-video. This is a beautiful looking film, and the animators, primarily from Disney's satellite animation studio in Japan, gave the characters plenty of life. The Hundred Acre Wood is excellently drawn, too. Even if the story did not always engage me, I did really like looking at the film and appreciating the animation on the characters. For the most part, Disney has often kept the Winnie the Pooh characters consistent in their visual appearance ever since the first Pooh short, Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree, in 1966. You can tell the artists have really studied those classic shorts and learned from them when it comes to bringing Pooh and friends to life. I also appreciated the depiction of Piglet in this movie. Even though he strangely takes a back seat to the other animals for a good amount of it, his characterization does highlight what makes him such a relatable character. All the Pooh characters represent some part of our personalities and emotions, whether it's Winnie the Pooh's optimism, Eeyore's sadness, or Rabbit's desire for everything to come together as planned. In the case of Piglet, he represents our fears and doubts. There's a part near the end where Pooh tells Piglet that he's done so many great things for the Hundred Acre Wood, and he responds that he's never done anything great. And I think anyone who's ever had self-doubt can relate to that moment of not believing they've ever contributed anything of importance. I think that's one of the major reasons why Milne's characters continue to resonate with so many, whether during their childhood or after they've grown up. The film does end on a sweet note, and I did not mind revisiting those 75 minutes. I also like the film even briefly acknowledged the events of the Tigger movie, thus keeping some continuity between the movies. The main problem I have with Piglet's big movie is I just don't think the filmmakers had enough story to sustain that runtime, and this would have worked better as a television special. However, it's still Winnie the Pooh, and it's difficult not to be charmed at certain points. Now let me know in the comments what you think of Piglet's big movie, and thank for the request, Micah.